Hi, brothers and sisters and friends and everybody else out there. Um, for some reason, this is just really pressed upon my spirit to talk about taking up your cross daily. Um, I was been studying Luke a lot right now and you know just getting deeper in with God and you know seeing the miracles and seeing things like at a different angle and some stuff I didn't even know before I know now you know so, so it's always good to read over the Gospels and I was reading Luke and then um, I I ended the chapter and I fell asleep <laughs> And it was like I dreamed about what I just read. It was amazing. If I go to tell you about what it was, I can't do that. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I woke up, and I woke up with an urgency inside my heart. And it, to talk about this, to talk about people needing to take up their cross daily, you know. And so I'm going to read... Um, Matt, I'm going to read Luke, and I'm also going to read Matthew, and I'm going to talk about it. So, Luke, sorry, Luke 9, 23, says, Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but are yourself lost or destroyed? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God. So in this confrontation of wills, Jesus shows the critical importance of submitting our will to God's will. Jesus has a prior claim on our life that supersedes our personal conveniences or our desires. Clinging to selfish ambition and worldly desires will destroy us. Paradoxically, to give up your life in a relationship with God through Jesus is the only way of finding ultimate meaning and purpose. This teaching opposes our natural inclinations and can only be accepted by faith. But if we submit our will to God's will, we will begin to experience the meaningful life that God wants us to have. Okay. You know, you probably hear that a lot in... Like, well, what does that mean? Like, how do you not know that you're not living that godly life? You know, maybe you think that what you're doing is right. Does it line up with the Word of God? If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, then you're not living the godly life. And Matthew... Hold on. <laughs> All right. And Matthew... Um, 1037 reads, If you love your father or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Ouch. You know, some people do. Or if you love your son or daughter more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will gain it. You will find life. 
Anyone who receives you receives me, and anyone who receives me receives the Father who sent me. So, I'm going to back up a little bit. Or it talked about laying down, taking up your cross daily. I have to do that every single day. I have to die to my old self. Because sometimes my old self wants to come up and be stubborn with things, you know, cause, or uh, refuse, procrastinate, procrastinate on something. Oh, I'm a, I used to be a big procrastinator, and the Lord's working on me with that still. But glory to God, I, I mean, I wake up and I make my bed every day, something I never used to do. <laughs> But, you know, just those little things that, to me, that matter. And it keeps me on that road following the Lord. And I constantly have to die to myself. Like, for example, my brother. Lord knows I love him. I do, I love him. But just simple, little bitty, itty things like, you know, Washing the dishes, cleaning up after yourself, you know. Uh, he, my, an, an older brother should do that. But many days would go by and this one dish is not even... Sorry. Okay, I know who that was too. Um, anyway, an older brother should, it's just common knowledge you would think, okay? If the trash is piling up, don't test to see how much it can hold before it overflows and the cat jumps in the trash cans to get it. You just don't do that, you know? So I'm like... I want to be stubborn and be like, no, I'm not going to take out this trash until he will do it first. But I'm a child of God. I have to put that happy face on and, okay, Lord, I am your servant. I will take out this trash. <laughs> you know? So I'm constantly having to die. And I know that whenever I get to heaven, the, my Jesus will have rewards for me for, for not being stubborn. I mean, just being in heaven would be my reward. Just being with God. And so, um, let me continue. If you receive a prophet as one who speaks for God, you will be given the same reward as a prophet. And if you receive righteous people because of their righteousness, you will be given a reward like theirs. And if you give even a cup of cold water to one of the least of my followers, you will surely be rewarded. So, you see, God is speaking and he is saying that if we will just if receive people, you know, like so many people, it's hard, for, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard for people to receive others because of trust because of lack of trust, because what they have went through in their life. And I get that. But when you are a born again, and you have come to Christ, and you have let the Lord transform you inside, from the inside out, you have to trust. You, ha you know, you, you can't have that doubt in the back of your mind. And it says here, um, all right. The only way to find life and get control of it is to submit to God through Jesus Christ. Living for self, we become a slave to material success, work, alcohol, illicit sex, or any number of other d destructive behaviors. We have lost control of our life and are in trouble 
but by turning to Jesus, we allow him to cleanse us of our addiction and show us the real way of life. A life free of any destructive dependency. As we obey God, we will find meaning in our present life and eternal peace with God. You know, I, I laid down my life. My, uh, that old me, that selfish behavior, that addict that I was, that liar that I was, that cheater that I was, uh, you know, that whore, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I was, I was, I was all sin, and I laid that girl down, I laid that evil person down. And I took up my cross, and I just be, the Lord just began doing a mighty work in me, and I know if what He can do in me, He can do in you, if you allow Him to. It's all about what you choose. It's your choice to follow Christ or to not follow Christ. That's what the Lord has given us free will. But there will be consequences paid for the road that you choose. You know, people are dying today for following Christ. But you know what? When you follow Christ and you have an intimate relationship with the Lord and He knows you and you know Him and, you know, you would you're you're going to come to a point where you would die for Christ because of you'll just understand what he did for you on that cross he died on the cross for our sins so we don't have to live in regret shame guilt pain depression we don't have to live in that you don't have to live ho hopeless you know the Bible says that come to me all who are heavy burden and laden for my yoke is easy and my burden is light and just lay down your burdens give your burdens to the Lord and he will give you peace he, you will find rest in him and I it's you know and so I have laid down that old me and I picked up the new me and I received I mean the, this Bible is true the Word of God is true like what there is power in the Word and there's life in this Word and when he says I mean what the Lord says is true there is no lie in the Word of God and when he says that you will find life, if you lay down your life for my sake, you will find life, that's true. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm living that life right now with my relationships being uh, fixed. You know, they're, what's the word I'm looking for, mended and, you know, restored. Thank you, God. The Lord has restored my relationships and my marriage and, you know, uh, just everything. Just seek Him, you guys. Read your word and take up your cross daily. Alright, I love you. I had to get this message. It was pressed upon me. So, I love you all. I hope you have a beautiful night <laughs> with the Lord. Bye.